Yes, I truly do think it's possible to get high on histamine. In this video, what I'll do is actually share my experience deliberately increasing histamine levels in the brain to see what effect this would have on my general well-being and vitality. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas. I undergo various crazy experiments on this channel and I also share some real cutting edge science that you guys will absolutely love. So please make sure to like this video and hit subscribe down below to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research. So how is it possible to get high on histamine? Well, let's first of all strip this back and have a look at one of the most commonly abused drugs on the market called modafinil. One of modafinil's effects in the brain is to increase histamine. Although it also increases dopamine and norepinephrine and orexin, the histamine increasing aspect of modafinil is perhaps one of the ways in which modafinil stimulates alertness, keeps you aroused and awake. And what I'll do is also share with you more features about histamine that people need to be aware of. So first of all, histamine is a psychoactive neurotransmitter. Just like dopamine, just like serotonin, this means it can affect your thought patterns, your mood state, and also your behaviors. We just need to remind ourselves that histamine is not just related to allergies or hay fever or seasonal allergies. We need to also consider that there are effects that histamine can exert in the brain. So we can see different types of histamine receptors. So we got number one, the histamine H1 receptors, H2, H3, and H4. H1 is mostly associated with the allergic inflammation. It can also affect vascular permeability. H2 is referring to gastric acid secretion. This is one of the ways in which some of those stomach acid blockers that are prescribed for reflux, in my opinion, absolutely should not be used. This is my opinion. I've got a long story about reflux medications that I could talk for hours about. I'm not a fan of reflux medications. H3 is looking at the neurotransmission, so how histamine affects the brain. Number four, we can look at the H4 receptor, which affects immune cell chemotaxis, immune response, and also inflammation. So how can you boost histamine? Well, as I mentioned before, modafinil is one way but I don't think it's a sustainable way to keep histamine high. Another way we can do it is to use L-histidine supplements. And I've already made a video on L-histidine, the benefits of that amino acid. It's an essential amino acid, by the way, which means you need to consume it. Your body can't make L-histidine. And then thirdly is Kutajar extract. Now, what I also want to also mention is that there's another compound known as beta histine. Now, beta histine is prescribed for many years disease and also vestibular balance disorders and also vertigo. So for this particular experiment, I actually utilized a mega dose of both beta histine. So 64 milligrams of beta histine and also L-histidine at 3000 milligrams. Now, obviously this is a non-exhaustive list of ways that we can boost histamine and modulate neurotransmitters. If you wanna learn more about other ways to modulate your brain chemistry and neurotransmitters, I do have a comprehensive nootropics course, a masterclass, you'll see that linked on my website. It goes through tons of ways in which we can biohack the brain and manipulate these neurotransmitters. So I was dosing four tablets of beta histine. They were 16 milligrams each, a grand total of 64 milligrams and First of all, what I want to obviously emphasize is the most powerful appetite suppressive effect that I've ever experienced from any drug or supplement. Now, this is interesting because we've seen some research suggesting that histamine, particularly the H3 receptor, is actually related to anorexia and also can affect satiety signaling and make someone feel full. So I definitely noticed this effect. For me, this is a negative effects because my general appetite is already not great. Having said that though, I was able to fast until 3 p.m. quite easily. Usually I fast till around maybe like 11, 30, 12 midday before I have my first high protein, high fat meal and low carb meal. But the initial come up was very obvious after dosing. I noticed that I had an immediate reduction in brain fog and a very pronounced boost in alertness and attention. Now I felt aroused, but not sexually aroused. I felt kind of like I was just turned on, like my brain was on, my cognition was firing on all cylinders. But when I then used 3000 milligrams of L-histidine two hours after dosing better histine, I got that very distinct flushing effect. Some people get that from better alanine when they use better alanine supplements. And it almost felt like 
I was like really hot and warm in the face, but that effect only, you know, lasted a few minutes and then eventually subsided. Now, if we were to continue my journey, my um, experiment here, about 60 minutes later, that's when I felt all the distinct effects of having high histamine. I really felt charged up, but it wasn't really in a controlled fashion. It felt dirty. I felt like it was a speedy rush feeling. It felt raw. And to be honest, it felt kind of gross. I actually didn't really enjoy it. It was nothing like, for example, teacrine or dynamine or parazanthine or a caffeine theanine combo where it was a bit more smooth. I honestly just felt like I wanted to move. Even though I was on my treadmill desk, you know, doing my work as per usual, that really wasn't cutting it. And I was still feeling slightly irritable and I wanted to go to the gym. And this was obviously still with minimal appetite. I noticed that my behaviors were becoming just more irritable, impatient, almost as if I was boosting norepinephrine or noradrenaline levels too high because I know what that norepinephrine feels like. Now, one thing I really want to highlight, and this is quite interesting, was the acute effects in terms of strength and pumps in the gym. Now, I really wish I took my resting blood pressure because at baseline, I do have low blood pressure, but this felt like it raised my baseline blood pressure. What was interesting is that based on my experience in the past, when my blood pressure is way too low, that significantly affects my pumps and strength in the gym. Like that is the most obvious negative effect of having very low blood pressure is you're just not able to get a good squeeze and contraction in the muscle. And you obviously lose that pump because the blood pressure is not strong enough. But this time around with the beta histine and L-histidine, my workout really was amazing. I felt that aggressive strength, which was like a non-hormonal aggression. It was more so like, that neurotransmitter predominant effect, so the histamine-based effect, and it was just increasing arousal. Now, we know that lifting weights, particularly activities that we know how to do, increasing arousal is actually beneficial, whereas, for example, if we're learning a new skill or we're trying to engage in something highly technical, we don't want to be too aroused. We also don't want to be under-aroused. We want to be in that sweet spot. So that's something that I really noticed with beta histine and L-histidine, and the final point I want to illustrate here is that it took a long time to fall asleep um, during these days. I noticed that my brain was ticking quite a lot and overthinking quite a lot late at night. So that affected my sleep. So I really want to highlight and illustrate some of the symptoms of low histamine. Now, low histamine people are generally very lax people. They're tired. They want to sleep all day. Most of the day, they've got a dysfunctional circadian rhythm. Histamine can also be characterized by persistent paranoia even at family members or formerly or current good friends or acquaintances, and is characterized by a generally an indifferent feeling, depressed or dysphoric mood. Now, low histamine people are generally high in copper. Now, they feel very little pain signals, and some have been documented putting their finger through open flames without being bothered by it or breaking light bulbs in their hand as a show of force, seeing as they would be unbothered by or not notice the typical pain signals. So this pain asymbolia runs particularly strong in low histamine individuals. Now, this was interesting research that I found presented by Area 1255, looking at how low histamine people or individuals can tolerate greater levels of pain. Here are some of the other psychological signs of low histamine. So poor spatial memory, problems remembering basic tasks, hyperactivity in children and mood swings, depression, suicidal ideations, but lack of energy to carry it out, generalized anxiety, obsessions, but not compulsions or altered compulsions, craving for alcohol and or stimulants. We're looking at a low appetite or low sex drive, a general lack of motivation or zest for life, trouble forming relationships or friendships with people. So lack of communication skills or no desire for communication and or interaction with society, intense paranoia, even of close relatives, panic disorders, other phobias and loss of creativity. They sometimes have a grandiose sense of self, delusions of grandeur. They can also be aggressive and unpredictable and acts of fear. So yeah, let's get a discussion going down below. Do you think that you potentially have low histamine? Drop a comment down below. Let's get a discussion going. On the contrary, let's take a look at some of the symptoms of high histamine. Now, obviously these symptoms here are very vague. They're very broad. So some of those low histamine symptoms, you might have those symptoms, but it may not be related to histamine at all. Or you may have a lot of those symptoms that are actually very much linked to low histamine. We're looking at a very strong competitiveness. So very high libido, persistent sexual arousal. So always feeling horny, very strong motivation at first, but compulsively loses interest, becomes bored, very creative and intelligent, very impulsive, aggressive, 
again, delusions of grandeur, obsessive compulsive, preoccupation with sexual fantasies. Now, remember that these high histamine individuals, particularly men, actually have premature ejaculation. So histamine decrease the time it takes for you to ejaculate. They're usually shy as a teenager, but opposite as they get older. They have persistent anticipation anxiety. So the anxiety leading up to a big event. They're very analytical and very aware and they're able to easily lie and become great at manipulating others. So that pretty much wraps up this video on histamine. I have covered another video on um, modafinil alternatives. Be sure to check that out. If you want to learn more about nootropics, be sure to visit my website. I've got more resources over there. But otherwise guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.